on World News Tonight. Full-scale invasion. Vladimir Putin unleashes his forces and all-out assault on Ukraine from the land, sea and air. Dozens reported dead as explosions and sirens blare across the country. Rejecting Russia. Ukrainians and allies around the world continue to rally against the Russian invasion while diplomats plan even harsher sanctions. World leaders decry the aggression infecting the breached country. Ukraine grounded. With relentless attacks being fired by Russia, Ukrainian citizens duck and cover, sheltering in place and underground as the country's fights peace has now been cleared by aircrafts. With no way in and out of the country, helpless victims pray for safety. And the carnival continues. Summer schools in Rio spring back into groove as the pandemic pause wears off enthusiastic dancers. This is Other Than Anna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. Our top stories today still leads on with the Russian invasion. Russia's aggression has spread well into stricken Ukraine as it is now reported by President, President Zelensky himself that Russian forces have taken over Chernobyl, causing mass panic among citizens. Ukrainian forces battled Russian invaders on three sides Thursday after Moscow launched the biggest attack on a European state since World War II prompting tens of thousands of people to flee their homes. The Russian invasion came by land, sea and air in a massive show of force. U.S. officials warned Russian forces were making advances on Ukraine's capital of Kiev, and the Ukrainian prime minister said Russia had captured the former nuclear power plant at Chernobyl. Heavy fire was exchanged in the northeast and in the seaside city of Odessa in the south. The assault brought a calamitous end to weeks of fruitless diplomatic efforts by the West, with Russian President Vladimir Putin declaring war in a pre-dawn televised address. He said he had ordered a special military operation to protect people, including Russian citizens, subjected to, quote, genocide in Ukraine, an accusation the West calls baseless propaganda. U.S. President Joe Biden blasted Russia's aggression from the White House, calling it a war without cause. Putin is the aggressor. Putin chose this war. And now he and his country will bear the consequences. Thursday began with missiles raining down on targets across Ukraine and reports of troops pouring across the borders from Russia and Belarus. President Volodymyr Zelensky called on Ukrainians to defend their country and said arms would be given to anyone prepared to fight. What we have heard today are not just missile blasts, fighting and the rumble of aircraft. This is the sound of a new Iron Curtain, which has come down and is closing Russia off from the civilized world. The UN Refugee Agency said an estimated 100,000 Ukrainians had fled their homes. Some took shelter in train stations. Others tried to get out. The highway heading west out of Kiev was choked with traffic across five lanes as residents fled, fearful of bombings while stuck in their car. Biden has ruled out sending U.S. troops to defend Ukraine, but Washington has reinforced its NATO allies in the region with extra troops and planes as countries across the west impose tough sanctions. Putin's endgame remains unclear. He said he did not plan a military occupation, only to disarm Ukraine and purge it of nationalists. Russia launched multiple attacks across Ukraine and captured the still radioactive Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Ukrainian troops are fighting back, but they are being pushed to the limit by Russia's full-scale invasion. It was unprovoked. But this is what Russian President Vladimir Putin unleashed on Ukraine. As the sun came up this morning, a missile striking an industrial park in western Ukraine. A helicopter assault on an airport outside of Kiev. Close, intense fighting. And there are civilian casualties. Local officials say this apartment building was struck in eastern Ukraine. Heartbreaking images of people, bloodied, staggering out of their homes. And this is what remains of another family's apartment, a baby stroller among the debris. Ukraine says it's destroyed some Russian tanks using American-supplied missiles, that this is a damaged Russian helicopter, and that it has captured some Russian soldiers. On day one, the army has been holding strong. 
But they're being pushed to the limit by Russia's full-scale invasion with attacks across Ukraine, which is the size of Texas, from areas near those pro-Russian enclaves in the east to the capital, Kiev, in the west. Even capturing the still radioactive Chernobyl nuclear reactor. It all began from a desk before dawn, when Russian President Vladimir Putin declared a special military operation on Russian television. Russia cannot feel safe, develop and exist with a constant threat emanating from the territory of modern Ukraine, he said, describing the government in Kiev as a junta of neo-Nazis determined to build nuclear weapons. It was a split-screen moment, Putin announcing his assault as his actions were slammed at the UN Security Council, Ukraine's ambassador blasting Russia's representative. The Russian president declared the war on the record. Should I play the video of your president? There is no purgatory for war criminals. They go straight to hell. Later, after Putin stopped speaking on cue, the missiles and airstrikes began. Russian tanks rolling across the border from Belarus in the north and Crimea in the south. For Ukrainians, the choice was to hide in deep Soviet-era subways built long ago to shelter Ukrainians from an American attack, or to run if they could get through the traffic heading out of Kiev, or to ride it out, stocking up on food and cash. Ukraine is fighting for its right to exist as a sovereign country and against a man who says Ukraine belongs to him. Protesters are taking to the streets in support of Ukraine as many of the demonstrators who are Ukrainian immigrants are still desperate to hear from their loved ones, not just in the United States, but also worldwide. Tonight, a striking show of support for Ukraine from coast to coast. In New York City, protesters draping the heart of Times Square in blue and yellow, waving a massive Ukrainian flag. Voicing their objections to Russian President Vladimir Putin. Russia, go home. Russia, go home. And urging all Americans to pay attention. I'm scared by the world response. Alex bringing his young son. Christina there with her family, too. It's um, heartbreaking to see that the world is watching what is unfolding, um, an illegal war, um, the attack on a sovereign nation. Pro-Ukrainian protest bubbling up in all corners of the country, from Los Angeles... The whole world will never forget this. ...to Washington, D.C. ...to Austin, Texas... Ukraine is free! Ukraine is free! ...to Chicago... In New York, what started in Times Square spread. Stop the war! Stop the war! Outside the Russian consulate, a small but emotional gathering. <laughs> but no matter the size of the group, <laughs> the message was the same. Ukraine is more than its borders. And for so many of them, every missile, every gunshot hits home. Ukraine closed its airspace to civilian flights, citing a high risk to safety, while Europe's aviation regulator also warned against the hazards to flying in bordering areas of Russia and Belarus because of military activities. Flight tracking websites show empty skies over Ukraine, or empty of airliners at least. Ukraine has closed its airspace to civil flights following its invasion by Russia in the early hours of Thursday. The EU aviation watchdog has also warned that flights within Russia and Belarus within 100 miles of the Ukraine border could be risky. It says there is a danger of targeting or misidentification of civilian aircraft. Airlines responded immediately. One El Al flight from Tel Aviv to Toronto made a sudden turn out of Ukraine's airspace. A lot Polish Airlines flight from Warsaw to Kyiv turned back at about the same time. The air travel industry has taken extra care over conflict risks since Malaysian Airlines flight MH17 was downed over eastern Ukraine in 2014. The organisation Safe Airspace, which was established after that incident, has now issued a do not fly warning for the country. Russia has also closed some of its airspace close to the border and suspended domestic flights to the area. 
Many Western countries had already advised their airlines to avoid some parts of the region, but had stopped short of a total ban. Lufthansa, KLM and others had already suspended flights. Russia's invasion of Ukraine had major consequences for Germany's foreign policy. The country's top government now firmly stands against Russia's actions, claiming irreparable damage to its future diplomatic efforts. Let's cross over to Adderana World News Special Correspondent Inuka Ponzo, who joins us now from Kleve in Germany. Inuka? Yes, Shanali. Following Russia's attack, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz took to Twitter to say that the situation is serious. The peace in Europe is built on not changing borders and they must return to the principles of state sovereignty being respected and the borders not being moved. Foreign Minister Anna Lena Baerbock was more emotional, warning that the world would not forget this day of shame. Germany is stunned but not helpless, she said, announcing a package of massive sanctions. According to the Vice Chancellor and Economy and Climate Minister Robert Habeck from the Green Party, the attack will have several political and economic consequences for Russia. Finance Minister Christian Lindner and Party Chairman for the Neoliberal Free Democrats said that Russia faced tangible and painful sanctions, but its goal of limiting new borrowing in Europe's biggest economy to 100 billion euros this year was a benchmark that remained unchanged in the crisis. The Kremlin's move also leaves the policies of Scholz, Presidia and Angela Merkel in ruins. Following the annexation of Crimea in 2014, Merkel invested much effort into putting the Minsk protocols into place, joining France in efforts to mediate between Russia and Ukraine and create a fragile peace. Back to Shanari. All right, thank you. That was other than a World News Special Correspondent Inu Kaponzo reporting from Kleve in Germany. Top European Union leaders said President Vladimir Putin must and will fail as they agreed new sanction over its invasion of Ukraine, saying he was trying to bring the continent back to the age of empires and confrontations. We have Abhidhar in the world news special correspondent Chetan Adar Maratta who joins us now from Normandy in France. Chetan, over to you. Yes, Shanali. Russia launched its invasion by land, air and sea following a declaration of war by Putin. An estimated 100,000 people fled as explosions and gunfire rocked major cities. Dozens have been reported killed. The bloc's D leaders agreed in principle at an emergency overnight summit to impose new economic sanctions, joining the United States and other in taking steps such as curbing Russia's access to technologies. EU Commission Chief Yuzrela von der Leyen told a news conference that the sanctions would cut Russia's access to the most important capital markets, hence increasing the former Soviet Republic borrowing costs and raising inflations there. Von der Leyen also said the export curbs to Russia would hurt its oil sector by stopping access to material it needs from the EU for its oil refineries. That will over time trigger a depletion in Russia's oil refining revenues. However, whereas the United States issued detailed sanctions, EU countries split over just how far to get left details to be worked out in the coming days. French President Emmanuel Macron told the same news conference that the vote showed Europe needed to become a real power and independent in the fields of energy and security. Back to you, Shanali. Thank you, and that was Adhidharana World News Special Correspondent Chetan Adharmaratna reporting from Normandy in France. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more World News. Welcome back to World News Tonight. Following a major surge in infections in Hong Kong, the government has taken measures to prevent a repeat of the rapid rise by implementing new vaccine passports along with tougher COVID restrictions. Hong Kong rolled out vaccine passports on Thursday, requiring people aged 12 and above to have at least one COVID-19 jab and paved the way for mainland China to help bring a worsening outbreak under control. Hong Kong has registered over 400 deaths since the pandemic started over two years ago, fewer than other similar major cities. Now, residents are mandated to show their vaccine record to access venues including supermarkets, shopping malls and restaurants, a major inconvenience in a city where malls link train stations to residencies and office buildings. 
Kelly Nye is an office worker in Hong Kong. I think at this moment it's useless. There is a preliminary positive case in the building where I work. I don't know if it will become a confirmed case, but if you look at the current COVID-19 outbreak, even if you scan the vaccine passes QR code, it does not seem to be helping the current situation. Eric Maria Cher, a French national living in the city, accepts the vaccine pass. What uh, bothers me it's more the zero COVID uh, policies that I don't... Uh, uh, I think we should live with the COVID and actually that's what's happening in uh, Hong Kong now with uh, many people uh, uh, being uh, confined at home and not in, um, in, uh, in Penny Bay. So for me, vaccine price is OK. The government also tightened restrictions from Thursday in a city that already has some of the most stringent rules in the world. Residents will have to wear masks for all outdoor exercise and will not be allowed to remove them to eat or drink on public transport. Bars, gyms and other businesses remain closed and shopping malls deserted while many residents work from home. The government said on Tuesday schools would break early for summer and resume the new year in August. With the city's testing, treatment and isolation capacity already stretched to the maximum, University of Hong Kong researchers predicted new infections could peak at 180,000 a day next month. After relentless efforts of the international community pleading for peace, the Sudanese government has released well over 100 protesters of an estimated 135 that were imprisoned for what the militia called radical activism that violated the regulations enforced by the regime. Sudan released 115 of some 135 anti-coup protesters who had been held for weeks on Thursday, following pressure from lawyers, families and the international community. The detainees are part of a protest movement against a coup last October that has persisted despite security crackdowns killing 82 people and wounding more than 2,000, according to medics. Their detention followed the reinstatement of powers to the country's powerful intelligence service in late December, which had been a key tool under former President Omar al-Bashir. Adama Deng of the UN Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights called for the immediate release of all the other protesters. Lawyers say the detainees include protesters, members of neighbourhood resistance committees, union members and politicians. Those still imprisoned include top former officials under the civilian military power sharing arrangement prior to the coup held on corruption charges, as well as protesters accused of killing a police brigadier general. It seems that Elon Musk's complaint on the alleged harassment he faces with the U.S. Security and Exchange Commission did not fall on deaf ears as the committee is now probing the controversial figure on his recent sale of Tesla stock, suspecting insider trader violations. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission is investigating whether recent stock sales by Tesla chief executive Elon Musk and his brother Kimball Musk violated insider trading rules, the Wall Street Journal reported Thursday. According to the report, the investigation began last year after Kimball sold shares of the electric car maker valued at $108 million. A day before, Musk polled Twitter users asking whether he should offload 10 percent of his stake in Tesla. Ten days after Musk's poll, on November 16th, the SEC issued a subpoena seeking information related to some financial data. The potential probe would escalate Musk's battle with regulators as they scrutinize his social media posts and Tesla's treatment of workers, including accusations of discrimination. Just last week, Tesla and Musk accused the SEC of harassing them with a, quote, endless and unrelenting investigation to punish Musk for being an outspoken critic of the government. Tesla's stock has fallen about 33 percent since Musk began selling billions of dollars worth of shares on November 8th, two days after the poll, in which 58 percent of voters supported his proposal to offload shares. Welcome back to World News Tonight. For more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. A magnitude 6.1 earthquake struck inland near the western coast of Indonesia's Sumatra Island, killing at least two people and causing tremors that were felt in neighboring Singapore and Malaysia. 
Chief of Staff of the Japanese Maritime Surf Defense Force, Admiral Hiroshi Yamamura, paid tribute to slain soldiers at the National War Memorial in New Delhi. Yamamura laid a wreath at the memorial as he remembered the sacrifices made by the soldiers in war. A bombardment carried out by Colombia's armed forces killed 23 FARC descendants as part of a military offensive to seize control of an area in the northeast of the country which sits on the border with Venezuela. The Abbey Cow, which roughly translates as the Eat Guys, food truck is the Pakistani's first mobile restaurant staffed entirely by deaf workers, providing an economic opportunity for them. The food truck is the brainchild of the hearing in Pali family, with both parents and their two sons who are entirely totally or partially deaf. The National Health Commission said the Chinese mainland recorded 82 new locally transmitted COVID-19 cases and 142 imported ones. And that's all the news we have for you tonight. Join us again on Monday for more news around the globe. In case you have missed to watch any of the stories we aired tonight, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash English. We are leaving you tonight with visuals of summer schools in Rio getting ready for the carnival after pandemic pause. Stay tuned for the World News Special tonight with Mahish Johnny on the Russian invasion on Ukraine that will start in a few minutes. Thank you for watching. Good night.